Hey everybody, welcome to the Wasteland Codex. Think of this mod as a uh, sort of in-game encyclopedia for everything Fallout. Um, everything you run into, every faction you find, every item can be located. Aid, miscellaneous. This hollow tape here, the Wasteland Codex. Click on that. Each of these um, categories. I'll see. I'll have to encounter them in game before I can play it for you. Um, although we will turn on a setting, and we've got auto play on, so it'll play on its own. And uh, it's a narrated entry, a voice narrated entry. Which is pretty cool. Or you can open up the Pip Boy and uh, navigate manually to it. Let's take a trip. The Abernathy Farm. Like there's a cow there, or a Brahmin if you'd rather, that we can check out. All right, let's see. Okay, so I've seen a cat and a Brahmin. Now, theoretically, it should start the narration on its own. Uh, I've noticed this sometimes can take a, like, I don't know, 30 seconds or so to start. But while we're doing that, we'll hoof it over to the uh, Red Rocket gas station where several of my friends are hanging out. We'll check it out and see what else we can find. Now, some things are uh, enemies, of course, are entered when you, you know, slay them. Um, okay, so Nick, Synth Gen 2 has popped in. Uh, strong, we see uh, Super Mutants. And Kate, well, she doesn't really have an entry. Too long since I picked a fight. In the back when times, oh, here we go. domesticated cow was everywhere. A staple of American life. That's not a nice thing to call from Kate. Vegas to Boston tell us that the Americans feasted on this fatty herbivore in the form of burgers and steaks. Today, we wastelanders indulge ourselves in much the same way. Brahmin are an integral part of daily life in most settlements. Hmm. Their role in society has changed little in today's wasteland, providing meat, milk, hide, and manual labor. Brahmin are also an essential part of trade. They'll often be found serving in caravans as pack animals. A naturally docile creature, the Brahmin will not Maybe attack unless provoked, us, charging and headbutting anything it perceives as a threat. Now, if you're not familiar with the storyteller, go uh, to Shoddy Cast channel and check him out. Oh, power arm. Okay, you know what? We'll hop in here, and I believe it'll unlock this particular suit's entry for us. assume the dogs were the most popular pets in pre-war America. Well, I guess that's the only thing he's going to yap about with regards to cats. Miscellaneous, Codex, alright. Let's check out the, uh, Arms and Armor. Is not available yet. Um, Power Armor. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Here we go. Um, Let's look at the T-51 power the massive armor. success of the T-45 in Alaska, the scientists at West Tech... Now we can bring up an image. On power armor, developing technology there it is. ...would address its shortcomings. Enhance mobility, protection... Close it again. ...access to more firepower for its wearer. The need for an upgrade became painfully apparent in 2074 when American forces invaded China. Mechanized cavalry forces equipped with the aging T-45D suits were insufficient to decisively break through Chinese defenses. The T-51 power armor finally finished development in June 2076, nearly nine years after the Sino-American War began. The first units were deployed to China after the final combat tests performed at Fort Strong 
outclassing the T-45 in every aspect. The combination of a polylaminate composite armor blading with an ablative silver coating provided protection against both conventional and energy weapons. The high-flow hydraulic motors and the TX-28 microfusion pack set a new standard in warfare and represented the apex of pre-war power armor design. It's like the longest entry ever. The T-51 Model B decisively shifted the war in American favor, pushing Chinese forces to the brink of collapse. Mechanized cavalry units under General Chase completed the Anchorage Reclamation, armed with winterized T-51B power armor, while renewed offenses in China allowed American units to break through enemy defensive lines and close in on Beijing. <laughs> The combination of intense mass production and widespread deployment on all fronts of the war resulted in the T-51 power armor being fairly common. So that's like the entire history of that particular model of power armor. And, uh, you know, it just keeps going. Um, but it's pretty cool. That, you know, it sort of makes you a pip boy actually more like a miniature computer rather than just the game interface. Um, but again, a lot of things you have to encounter, oh, everything you have to encounter in-game. I must have aggravated these people somehow. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, we gotta run away. <laughs> so I'm sure the, uh, Brotherhood of Steel have popped up in my... Popped up in my, uh, database. Let's take a look. Uh, a miscellaneous wasteland codex. Um, I'm not sure how to get factions up. I don't know if I have to actually talk to them or what. Maybe. Well, there's no talking to those assholes. Synth Gen the Two. Generation synth is an evolution of the first generation like model. Bringing up the pictures. A host of mechanical and software upgrades. The most striking of these is a thick artificial skin supported by an underlying wire mesh. It covers the synth from head to toe. Well, you like theory. five menus deep. You tab out, hit tab to exit. The most important improvement is that it allows second And you'll be pleased to note that there is uh, Far Harbor and Nuka World support. So we'll see, I killed this angler here. Bestiary, anglers. Back when times, anglerfish didn't have arms or legs, but they were just as ugly. Lurking around shallow waters, anglers used bioluminescence to masquerade as lure weed. The Most image looks a lot better. Um, outside of the power armor. If you suspect an angler nearby, That's another note of the interest. Surface. It's Oops. possible to see the bulk of the creature lurking just below. You've got the eye for it. When hunting anglers. Leave the laser rifles at home. Bullets and other ballistic weapons are the better bet. So really, all you have to do uh, to enjoy this mod is explore the Commonwealth, like you've been doing. It's pretty cool. It's uh, pretty immersive, and it, you know, it gives you a pit boy a little more depth. Makes it feel like uh, you know it, it's an actual storehouse of information. Oh, this is tragic right here. Thanks for the stim pack, though. Well, we've already unlocked our Brahmin entries. Lucky us. Alright, hey, I think that'll do it for this video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And I will... Oh, you know what? Uh, before I go, let me give uh, ShoddyCast a shout-out. Because ShoddyCast, uh, if you haven't seen ShoddyCast's channel yet, there's a lot of lore and stuff there, and that's... Uh, You'll find the storyteller there as well. There's a bunch of storyteller videos. So if you enjoy that guy and his way of speaking, um, go check it out. Alright, hey. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Later. Isn't it fun to learn about the Commonwealth, Marcy? I gave you the idea we're friends. You'd better keep your mouth shut about this place. Can't trust anyone. Hey, alright, alright. Bitch.